Alan Steady here with Firewalls.com. In this video, we will be demonstrating how to configure a Sophos RED device in a standard split tunnel mode. When we configure our Sophos RED in a standard split mode, it will allow our remote LAN network to be managed by our Sophos XG firewall. With this configuration, it will then be possible for our UTM to provide DHCP to the remote LAN. When this configuration is in place, it is important to know that only traffic for selected networks will be sent through our RED tunnel meaning all other traffic destined for the internet is sent directly out the local gateway. The RED will masquerade outbound traffic to come from its public IP address. What this does is minimize bandwidth usage over the tunnel and reduces the bandwidth requirements on our firewall. So what this means is that traffic to or from the internet cannot be filtered or protected from threats and security can only be applied between the remote LAN and local LANs. In the event you are wanting to apply security policies for in and outbound traffic, consider using a different RED configuration with a tunnel wall, which we will demonstrate in a separate video, or another great solution here would be to utilize the Sophos Endpoint Antivirus to provide that added layer of security. So to get started here, we'll want to jump into the web admin of our Sophos XG firewall. Here in our web admin, our first order of business will be to enable RED. To do this, we'll navigate over here to configure and system services, and select red. Go ahead and toggle our switch here where we need to enter in some basic information. Enter in your organization's name, followed by the city where your UTM is deployed, and our country, and lastly enter in our email address. This email address is very important because what happens here is our red unlock code will be sent to this email address. So just be sure we're entering in a valid email address here. And select apply. Okay, so we can see now that our red configuration settings have been updated and we now have these two options here to force TLS 1.2 as well as our automatic device deauthorization. For security purposes, we do recommend to force the red device to only use TLS 1.2. However, this option is disabled by default to ensure that the new red device can connect to the firewall and first have a firmware upgrade to support TLS 1.2. So what we'll go ahead and do here is we'll actually configure our RED device first and then we'll come back and enable our settings here. To begin our RED configuration, we need to go ahead and create a RED interface. So go ahead and navigate to configure network and interfaces and we will add an interface and select the add RED interface. All right, so here under our RED interface settings, we'll start by giving it a name. Next, we need to select our RED type here. Selecting the drop down here will display the list of red devices. In our example here, we're going to be deploying a red 10. Next, here we need to enter in our red ID. You can obtain your red ID directly from the bottom of your red device. It's also listed on the foil label outside of the box that the red was shipped in. For our tunnel ID here, we'll leave that set to automatic. And here, our unlock code. And this is what we were talking about earlier when we enabled our red. This code will change each time our red is configured. So if you just so happen to remove the red and you need to provision it for a different firewall, it'll email you a new unlock code. So for all new deployments, you will typically leave this one blank. However, if you have previously configured it, you'll want to track down that email for the new red unlock code. Next, we need to enter in our firewall's IP address or our host name for our Sophos XG firewall. And down here in our device deployment, we can configure this to automatically provision, meaning that when we connect our RED device, it's going to automatically look for our provisioning server, pull down the configuration, which makes our deployment fairly hands-off for the remote end. Or alternatively, we can configure these RED devices to be provisioned using a USB stick manually. Moving down here in our RED network settings, this is where we're going to select our standard split mode, where we then need to enter in the IP address for our new remote LAN. Just keep in mind that this network that we're configuring here cannot overlap with any local network that we already have configured. So go ahead and enter in your remote network settings. Assign it to the appropriate zone. And we can also configure our DHCP server right here within our RED network settings. Next, we need to find our split network. This will update the routing information for our RED device and are ultimately the network that our remote LAN will be able to access. We'll just select our local LAN here. 
And way down here at the very bottom, we see that we have this option to enable a tunnel compression. I can't enable it on this particular red version. It's not supported. But just to make you guys aware, what this will actually do is compress all of the traffic that's sent through our red tunnel. So what this means is that we can increase the throughput of the red device, which are deployed in areas with very slow internet connection. However, you need to be aware that in some circumstances, enabling our data compression can actually reduce throughput of our red device. So if you're experiencing that, you'll definitely want to come back here and disable the tunnel compression. Go ahead and save it. Okay, so we can see our red device is being created now. So now here in our network interfaces, we can see our red is here. However, it's showing as it's offline. So what this means is it's now time to go ahead and connect the red. And once our red has provisioned, it will show right here as being online, as well as the public IP address that it is routing behind. So what we can actually do now while we're waiting for our red to come online is we'll go ahead and configure our firewall policies for our red connection. And we'll do that under here under protect and firewall and add firewall rule. This will be a user network rule. Give it a name. And select our zones here. Since we're coming from the warehouse using any service going to our LAN here. Enable or disable identity. And as we discussed with this particular configuration, we're not able to configure any kind of malware scanning. So we can just go ahead and skip over this section here. However, coming down here to our intrusion prevention, we can enforce an IPS policy. In this example, we'll just go ahead and use our general policy. And if you wanted to implement any kind of traffic shaping, we could do that also right here. Go ahead and enable logging and save. All right, so our firewall policy is configured here. So we'll go ahead and jump back over to our interfaces and check in on our red. And there we are. We can see that our red device has been connected. We can also see its WAN uplink IP address, which means that our red is now connected. Our firmware has been upgraded. So we can go ahead and jump back over to our red configuration and force TLS 1.2 and configure our automatic device deauthorization. Let's go ahead and jump back over here to system services and red. And we'll just go ahead and enable these. And you can see here, once we enable this, it gives us a time, which means that after 60 minutes of our red not being online, our firewall will automatically deauthorize that red from establishing another connection. Go ahead and select apply. And we can see that our configuration has been updated. And that's it. I hope that you have found this video helpful. If you have and want to be informed of new video releases, just be sure to subscribe below. And more importantly, just come check us out at firewalls.com where we've got a team of certified sales and engineers that are happy to help you with your next IT project. Thanks for watching.